Such a narrative cannot even be believed or even imagined by a Muslim. Because if that is true, that our first leaders of Islam, Astaghfirullah, are terrorists like ISIS, then what does that make me and you and the rest of the whole Muslim Ummah? You see the dangerous message within this movie, that when they are saying that the first leaders of Islam killed their own prophet, and they spread terrorism, and then they are terrorists, and they even try to kill his family and everything, it is a slander upon Islam, and it makes every Muslim look like a terrorist. Muslims are not terrorists. Alhamdulillah, our forefathers, our fathers and grandfathers came to this country in the 50s and 60s and built this country. They built this country. They worked day and night in the textile industry, in the steel industry, in the cotton industry. These bazooks you see here, they made this country, mashallah. They made this country. The British, they called us here to this country to work and to build it, to build the industry and to uh, bring the economy up. And this is what our people did. We are law-abiding citizens. We pay our taxes. We abide by the law of the land. We do not go out insulting other people's religions and their holy figures, do we? No. We say, yes, you can have a disagreement with us. You believe differently, that's fine. You believe as you do. Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. The Holy Quran teaches us this. To you, your religion. To me, my religion. Allah says in the Quran, La ikraha fi deen. There is no force in religion. We do not force our views upon anyone. But what we would like to say to the West especially, that they talk about freedom of speech, freedom of expression, but freedom of speech also has its limits. What if somebody was to make a movie based on the biblical story, which is also Quranic, the story of the people of Prophet Lut alayhi salam, the people of Lut, Sodom and Gomorrah. According to the Quran and also according to previous scriptures, Judeo-Christian scriptures as well, those people were destroyed for practicing homosexuality. God destroyed them, Allah destroyed them. How about making a movie about this story and telling people this is a story from religious scriptures, even in the Jewish, Christian and Muslim. And we'd like to show everyone across cinemas across the country. You will have the LGBT lobby outside there in no time. Brother, it won't even get past the British Cinema Regulatory Authority. You know, it won't even get past there. It won't even get onto the screen in the first place. How is it that this movie has got onto the screen? So let's say you have a movie about the Holocaust. You have a narrative about the Holocaust and it blames the victims. For instance, it blames the victims and it says that these victims deserve to go in blast chambers. And for instance, it exonerates Adolf Hitler for what he did. Just imagine, would somebody be able to push this narrative into the cinema and show it on the screens? He definitely would not. It would be homophobia in the first case. It would be anti-Semitism in the second case. What if somebody wanted to push a narrative regarding the slave trade of Africans from Africa to America who were used and oppressed in slavery? Somebody wants to make a film about this and justify it based on a white supremacist narrative. Would this be allowed in our cinemas? If somebody wanted to make a movie, let's say, even on the Nakba of 1948, based on historical facts, how the indigenous population of Palestine, millions and millions of Palestinians were rendered homeless. They were basically kicked out of their homes, dispossessed of their land, and their children and elderly and everyone, men, women, murdered and slaughtered even to this day, and continuously happening in Palestine today. And then their land was dispossessed, and then there was the creation of the State of Israel. How about making a movie on this? How would that go down? Would that be free speech? Would you allow us to make a movie on this? Definitely not. They would not allow this. So how is it that when it comes to Muslims, we are free game? If extremist preachers like Anjum Chaudhry, Omar Bakri, people like this, and people like Tommy Robinson, far extremist, if these kind of people, would they be allowed to have a movie aired across the country? No. Then how is it that Yasser al-Habib, a Kuwaiti extremist, who is not even accepted by Shia, even Shia clerics, Sistani of Iraq and Khamenei of Iran, these leading Shia clerics, they have even issued an edict saying that it is not allowed for the Shia to openly insult and slander the companions and the wives of the Prophet This is coming from there. Iran has banned the movie. Iran, the leading Shia country, has banned the movie. Then what gives these people who are fringe group like ISIS, they are a fringe group of extremists, they belong to the Shirazi cult, which is not even accepted by mainstream Shia scholarship. How on earth have these extremists been allowed to spread this extremism which is going to cause the division between Sunni and Shia communities? Hatred and sectarianism and violence possibly between Sunni and Shia communities in the UK. Does the UK government allow this? So this message needs to go to the likes of Priti Patel and Boris Johnson. How did you allow this movie even onto our screens? So a movie which is causing division and hatred to Sunni Shia communities who have lived here peacefully and amicably for the past 60, 70 years. The government is to blame. And secondly, the regulating authorities, the media, they are to blame. And then I would also like to blame those people who justify this under the notion of freedom of speech. This is no freedom of speech. If there really was free speech, why have you banned Russian media? Why have you boycotted Russia in this regard? So this shows clear hypocrisy and clear double standards. Muslims need to stand up. 
Not be your MPs, not be your councillors. That's what they are there for. Tell them, stand up for our rights. Stand up for our rights. When something like this is being shown in, on the cinema screens, which is going to propel hatred against Muslims and Islamophobia, then we must stand against this. Because Alhamdulillah, we do not go out harming others. We say live and let live. And we are law abiding people. So they have no right to do this to us, to hurt what is uh, sacred and beloved to us.